There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm everyone. Dr. Womack, and this and I'm is Mr. Mo. And so, welcome to Wakanda Tech Academy. Today is Shuri's Sneaker Lab. So, you can pull up the um, PowerPoint for that. You just dive right into it? Yeah, we'll dive right into it. So, right, so if you remember from previous classes, Wakanda Tech or the Tech, the T E C H, stands for Technology, Entrepreneurship, Culture, and History. And the next slide. Okay, there we go. Okay. And uh, the quote that I always come back to from Toni Morrison is your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. So like I always say at the beginning of every Wakanda Tech Academy session is that the knowledge and skills that you gain through these type of classes and others, you need to pass that knowledge or use your skills to free somebody or help someone else. So I just wanna always kind of emphasize that. So today we will um, discuss a bit of history about a few iconic sneaker designs and innovation. And then Mr. Mo is gonna go over how to customize your very own sneaker with low cost materials. So you can move to the next slide. All right, so why sneakers in Wakanda? Why sneakers in Wakanda, Mr. Mo? <laughs> well, uh, like Dr. Womack said, everything about Wakanda Tech Academy is about connecting the movie Black Panther to things that we can do in real life that are centered around technology, entrepreneurship, culture, and history. And, uh, and when, we, when we think about some of the things that they did in the movie, and we were looking for different ways to create learning opportunities, one of the things that stood out was this idea of sneakers, right? Sneaker culture. And we know that that's very big here in America and really around the world. And so if you remember in the movie, uh, when T'Challa, after he was crowned uh, the Black Panther, he came in after the ceremony, he came into Shuri's lab. And, uh, and the first thing that she said to him, one of the first things was, what are those? <laughs> So if if, um, if you're familiar with the what are those mean, then it's pretty much uh, was born out of this idea of, of sneakers or shoes, right? And when he came in, he had these sandals on, you know, Jesus boots, if you <laughs> um, And she essentially clowned him by saying, what are those, right? And then, but after she asked him, what are those? She gave him a pair of sneakers okay and she said i call them sneakers you know so and really with the design of these now these are more high-end uh, high tech mm -hmm. and they allowed him to move around without producing any sound right so hence the name sneakers or sneaking around okay but so we took that and we ran with it if you will so um so we're going to take this idea of sneakers and pair it with the real world concept of sneaker culture uh sneaker heads and all of that and use it as a way to uh, give us an opportunity to do some making around sneakers and sneaker design, right? So that's the connection there between sneakers and Wakanda, if you were wondering, all right? So, um, so I just wanted to point out really quickly that the game of basketball was invented in 1891, and then the first rubber-soled shoe came out in 1892. So would you all happen to know maybe the first uh, brand name sneaker that came out in the early 1900s? Would you like to take a guess maybe on what that might have been, which company? And maybe I'll say possible ones. So Converse, Puma, Adidas, Nike. Am I missing any other ones that are really popular uh, well i mean nike was uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Go ahead. laughs> all right so all right we had one guest so caleb said converse and you are correct uh that would would have been in 1917 okay so if you look at the these slides here you'll see um one pair of converse right up in the left right here the okay. converse also okay. has to so I'll let Mr. Mo, because he knows more about the sneaker culture, go through some of these iconic 
Shoot. Now, I personally <laughs> wouldn't consider myself to be a sneakerhead, uh, but there are, you know, and I'll and I'll get to that shortly. There is a, a sneaker. I think everybody has that sneaker that um, uh, that they really enjoy or want to collect, uh, and I have one too. And it's actually on this page. But um, so if you see uh, here on the left, we have some sneakers that came out more in the uh, in the eighties versus some of the sneakers that you see here that have come out in the nineties. So, I mean, if you, if you were to kind of look at them, you, you, you see that there's a, a big jump in design aesthetic or meaning like how they look, right? So um, here you have more of the simple design, uh, I guess people would say is more functional. Um, and then you start to get into the, I think this is the Jordan one here, uh, Air Max, you start to have a little bit more flair over here, some colors, uh, but uh, Erica had pointed out that the colors palette is more simple here white blue red some gray down here um and so you and you see the here the, the converse here and that's exactly what it was like a white canvas shoe with red and blue accents things like that the little logo um so not too much flash and then you move over here to uh to some the the 90s shoes and this i think was in the actually in the 2000s but you get a little bit more color different colors here um more more uh different materials like this was a classic the jordan i think the jordan 9 because it had that patent leather on it and when and i remember when this came out because it was a very polarizing shoe meaning that you had people who were like hey this is great and then people were like that's an ugly shoe you know because nobody had used that sort of material on a shoe before typically you would only see like patent leather on like dress shoes, tuxedo shoes and stuff. And, and what, around what year was that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that was 93, 94. Okay. Um, but this Jordan 9, um, patent leather. And again, some people, you know, thought that was the craziest thing and it was so <laughs> great. And and then you have, uh, this is my shoe. So this the foam posit right here. When that came out, uh, I thought that was like the next level. Um, you know, it was made out of foam. It was supposed to mold to your foot so it felt better. And I actually have, if, if you know me, I have several pair of these now. And that was the next thing that I wanted to talk about is that even though these shoes originally came out in the 90s, these shoes, you, you probably recognize them because they're now called retro shoes, right? So this idea of like shoes from the previous few decades come out now mm -hmm. and and kids are lined up around the block to go and buy these shoes even though they're older shoes you know they come out with different colorways now colorways are like different pattern schemes you know so like you would have this one in the North Carolina blue so I think uh, like this patent leather wouldn't be black it'd be North Carolina blue and they have them where they're white and so different and same for all of these guys so this one here is the Jordan 11 I believe um, but it has the North Carolina color, which he went to the University of North Carolina. So then also different colorways of these shoes as well. And each of them in the different colorways have their rankings amongst the shoe. But ultimately, these are all retro shoes now that are still very popular today. And probably more popular than the shoes that are coming out today, in, in, in my opinion. So um, go ahead. Well, I was just going to point out, and you correct, can correct me if I'm wrong. So if the first rubber sole shoe came out in 1892, you almost had this 100 year history of kind of like up here in the um, left hand corner, this type of shoe. And it's only recently in the last, you know, 20 years, maybe 30 years or so, where we started getting more different kinds of designs and styles mm -hmm. and so it's, it's it's you know sneaker um design and innovation that's just really a fairly recent kind mm -hmm. of and they and they're trend. saying that and this is one mm -hmm. of the reasons why michael jordan is 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 kind of lauded he started that he when started. his shoe came out his signature shoe people were like people it became a culture you mm -hmm. know and then every year he would come out with a new shoe and now you see basketball players mm -hmm. they had lebron they have their own signature mm -hmm. shoes and um that come out every year a new version and uh and it, you've created this pretty much culture around it um for people who love to collect them and then people who can make money off because i know people that buy shoes stand in line buy them at regular at retail price and then they go ahead and they sell them online but two or three times of what they pay for them. So, you know, been able to create a business out of that. So, 
But um, yeah, so again, I'm sure a lot of you, if you're watching, you, you're familiar with the whole sneaker culture and probably have a couple pairs of your favorite sneakers as well. And also the one thing, last thing I wanted to point out is, I mean, there is quote unquote technology in these shoes. If you look, um, a lot of these shoes have the air bubble in the bottom here on the right, you know, so that was, that was now you get into the comfort, right? Mm -hmm. So here, I mean, this is the mm -hmm. Air Max, original Air Max when you, most of these shoes just had a flat rubber sole on them, right? And that's probably another defining characteristic of these earlier shoes. But when you get into these shoes, now you got, they call them Zoom Air or Vapor Max or, you know, so where the entire sole is made up of pockets of air. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of movement into not only color and design, but comfort in different kind of ways. And I saw something today um, that Nike has where they have like little balls in the bottom of the shoe like a bean bag, you know? And so, so a, a lot of things have happened from a technology standpoint too, uh, to increase comfort and wearability and all of that for, for people who are wearing shoes. So uh, that's that's also a good thing, so. Mm -hmm. And they're using them, the 3D printer, correct? With 3D printers, with uh, a lot of things, you know, a lot of different manufacturing techniques that are new um, also. So, okay. um, so that brings us to uh, what we call the Shuri Sneaker Lab, okay? So what we've done is, um, you know, uh, created a process for essentially being able to modify and adapt, customize any shoes you may have laying around. And now this, this process is more of a creating something that you can put on your shelf as a display piece versus actually wearing, wearing it out. And, you, and if you're <laughs> you brave want, enough, you, you can want. wear them out but I, I can't guarantee that they're going to function like you want them to function. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but so in this, this process kind of mimics how they actually make and design real shoes. And that's why we think it's a good way to kind of get an introduction into that whole industry. Okay. So we call it the Sherry sneaker lab. So the first step is actually designing your shoe. Okay. So if you look here in this top picture here, we took, um, and let me let me step out real quick because I want you to see the shoe that the we started original. with, okay? Um, and tell them where you got it from, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's I think that's, that's good. good okay, yeah. so here here's the shoe that we started with, okay? Basic shoe, rubber sole, uh, sort of like a mesh canvas. Uh, they, they call this part the upper of the shoe. The laces here, but very basic. Um, nothing that you, you know, could write home about, but uh, functional and very inexpensive. So I, I actually got this shoe from Five Below. So if you have a Five Below store, it actually has several different types of shoes there that, that you could pick up for relatively inexpensive. And remember, you know, I, I just knew I was going to grab some shoes that I was going to modify and not really wear out. So it doesn't have to be your size. This is actually, uh, I, I tried to get it close to the size my daughter wears, but, um, you know, with the idea that we're just going to modify these and turn them into like a display piece, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, so this is how it started out, all right? So and we'll get to um, what we actually made, how we made the shoe, okay? So, all right, so um, what we did is I actually took a picture of the shoe and then I traced the outline of it so that I can have like a, um, you know, a, a, a template for me to draw on, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I had the design of the actual shoe that I bought in, in a digital, space here that I can go in and mock up. And so we actually use sketchbook. So if you were in one of our earlier classes, sketchbook um, was a free tool that you could use mm -hmm. to download and you can import this uh, outline and then start to color in on it. So this just kind of gave me an idea now of the pattern design that I wanted to make out of this shoe. You know, um, I actually kind of veered away from this actual design but you, uh, you get the idea. So once you had the design, now that serves as like your, your blueprint for how you're gonna, gonna modify the shoe. So now when you're actually making shoes in real life, they use something called a last, L-A-S-T. Now a last is really like, kind of like a mold, you know, of a foot um, in a different size or whatever. But last pretty much, they cost like, I've seen them online from 50 to $90 for a last. Um, and that's if you're starting from scratch. And so we're not, so we don't have to use the last, but we're gonna use the same process. So once you have a last or a mold, then you use masking tape to cover it up, right? And so this is what I've done. I took our, 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 our starter shoe uh, and covered it in masking tape. And as you can see here, okay? 
Now we do that so that we can create a pattern on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we you can see I start to create the outline of the sole here. Uh, once I once I cover the masking tape, and then I go in and actually start to create some lines, design here. You see in the back some curve, and and whatever you created in your digital design here, you want to replicate on the shoe. Okay, and we'll talk about why we want to do that. Okay, so you see I used a pen here. Is it better to use a pen as opposed to a marker? Um, but you can use a pencil. Okay. Um, you know, okay. I was pretty, you know, I pretty much knew kind of the design okay. and, and I had a ruler too. So you see some of these lines are straight, okay. but you can do hand line, hand drawn lines as well. Um, and so, but you know, I, again, creating this outline here, cause I knew that at some point I'm going to get to the next step, which is, uh, actually starting to cut off this masking tape. Okay. So now, um, I cut it off. I used, I made a slit in the back because I knew that I was going to cover it up and then just started to peel this masking tape off. Okay? okay. And then now you can take this masking tape, flatten it out and it becomes a pattern for you. So if you can mm -hmm. see this masking tape pattern here is the same shape as what I've done here. And we've used foam for ours, but you can use fabric as well. Actually, if you use fabric, it makes it more wearable, but mm -hmm. for the foam piece, it looks a little bit better in my opinion, more vibrant colors. But then also, uh, you know, we're just going to use it as a display piece. Um, so I took that, made an outline on the phone. And you see here, some of the pieces are cut up too. And then you start to trace those on the colored phone that you're going to use to then apply back onto the shoe. So the first step actually is I had to flatten this out, create the, the blue, because I know I wanted to use blue as my base. And then after that, after I traced that out on the blue phone, I could start to cut out the smaller detail patterns and then put those on the foam, different colors that I was going to use, trace them onto the foam and then cut them out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how you get your patterns. And then uh, you start to piece it together. And, all right. So this is what it started out as. And then this is what it looks like. I actually had some, some Nike logos sitting around from a pair of shoes that I had bought. They were put into the box. And so I actually just put those on top of my original design. So here's what it looks like. I used just some crazy glue, a brush crazy glue uh, apl ap application process and um, put the, the base uh, blue on first that I had cut out. And then I put some of the other pieces that I cut out here, uh, glued those on. And then finally I put the two Nike signs as you can see here in the front and then uh, on the side here to uh, finalize my design. Okay. And so, and that was it. And it was a, uh, it was a pretty fun process to go mm -hmm. through. Um, and again, just taking, and you guys can maybe uh, be a little bit more creative yeah. than I was. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to walk through the process and show you how it's able to be done. Now you may have some, some crazy ideas in your mind as far as like what you wanted to put on here. And you can do that. The foam is really easy to work with. Uh, that's one of the reasons we use it too. And if you wanted to make a Nike sign out of foam, you could have done that as well, you know, and then reproduce it here. So. And also, did you want to make us, or yeah, did you yeah. have another? No, that problem? was it. That was it for the um, The other thing to notice, too, is that um, some of the choices that he kind of made in the beginning, he was going through a revision process or editing uh, process. So some of the things that he... Um, wanted to do originally like add green in there if you saw the green mm. foam he didn't end up using in the finished product and then um you said some of the designs that you yeah, had in the original sketchbook version he didn't end up putting on the finished product so again this is just knowing that changes are, will be made and you know you're going through kind of a revision process refining process as you move mm -hmm. forward and that's the same thing that engineers do um yeah. no. they have what's called sneaker um engineers materials and mm -hmm. engineers mm -hmm. where you can do this stuff on a daily basis are you so gonna yeah i'll show okay. so i mean just a quick way to really take your imagination if you've ever said like hey i can make a nice shoe mm -hmm. this is a way to kind of a uh, very low cost way to because these, these materials everything less than ten dollars right, which is great right I and mean, this is just to get you in the act of making, mm, you know, and designing and exactly. all of that. And, 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 and some of the processes are very similar. Uh, and if you go into the dive deeper and even the warm up section, 
uh, are very similar to how they actually make sneakers. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that was a, so if you can kind of get into this as a hobby or something, uh, it'll it'll definitely prepare you for actually creating your true sneakers. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's, here's the grand, grand unveil of, uh, <laughs> of the actual shoe. And I, and I want it, it's hard to see because yeah, of some of the light, lighting, light. there we go. But I wanted to use, uh, when I went out and got the foam, I was like, I want brighter colors, Easter colors, I guess, it's close <laughs> to Easter. So some yellows, light blue, purple, and pink in there. Um, uh, so like I said, maybe you can wear this. Can you put it? <laughs> if you take it out. Um, but um, the, yeah, it's very the, bright there, but. Um, you could try it. You could try it. I just think that it won't wear well in terms of like, you know, if you brush up against something, it may, you know. Come off. Yeah. But, uh, but again, it's, it's very inexpensive um, a way to kind of get into sneaker design. Now I would rock this shoe if I could, you know, personally. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not saying it just because it's my design, uh -huh. but I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's a nice shoe, you know. So <laughs> if I do so, it started out like, now nah, I wouldn't rock this. Cause this is where you rock these, and they're like, what are those? But this, this is, would take you to the next level right You're here. You're biased. I'm biased, sure but I'm, I'm, I mean, hey, leave a comment below once we post this in the classroom. Tell me what you think about my sneaker design, but. Um, <laughs> But like I said, didn't take me too long, very fun process, and then to see the end product, mm -hmm. I think was very fun, so. So if you do end up trying this out, um, leave a photo, of course, in the Wakana Tech Academy Learning uh, community on our website, just so, you know, again, we wanna see what you all come up with. So even if it's just your idea via sketchbook, mm -hmm. you can do that too, if you don't make it to this process, because I know um, right at the moment we're in right now, a lot of the stores are closed, so you may not be able to get the materials, but you know, you can at least start that imagination process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, nice little activity to do. Um, if, especially if you're in the sneaker design, mm -hmm. uh, or want to get into it, I think it's, it's a cool activity. It kind of mixes, uh, arts and craft with making and mm -hmm. actual Mm -hmm. shoe design so mm -hmm. and then the shoes are cheap too so that's um, yeah like i said less than ten dollars you can have a fun activity to do um and if you mess up there's nothing to go get another pair or to peel this off and start again but you wouldn't suggest because um you know kids might feel like oh can i mask or or is it mask or last my my own shoe uh, you wouldn't recommend well You'd have to talk to your parents. Yeah, about that. talk to your parents. But I mean, I you don't, don't you wouldn't it's destroy older, the shoe. If it was so, an older yeah. shoe, maybe. Not, yeah, if it's an older shoe, um, you could do that. Um, but again, these are cheap enough to go out and buy. You know, um, they had different designs too, you know. Um, but these are cheap enough to go out and buy that I wouldn't recommend messing up one of your newer shoes. Um, but, you know, if you if you so choose, that's, that's, that's <laughs> up to you, you know. Any, um, oh, any questions at all on the process? I think it's pretty, you explained it very well. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty simple process. And I'll post the, the uh, presentation in the class mm -hmm. section, uh, the Wakanda Tech class section, so that you can study it and follow it along. Again, we're going to go more in depth in a future version of the Wakanda Tech Academy that we'll be releasing, where it's a step by step, you know, watch us actually do that process. Mm -hmm. But um, you can still get started, you know, like I said, relatively inexpensively. So. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you all again for tuning in and until next time. See you later.